Hello again and uh, welcome to the Corner Studio here in my garage and today we're working on this copper panel repose and as you can see I've already laid in the outline that'll save us a little time in the video today but I will get the tools out and uh, walk you through how I got the outline uh, laid in. Uh, we've got a couple of cameras that I need to set up for the uh, shoot today. We'll have one pointed at the table and one overhead and um, take a few minutes so let me get all the tools out and everything that we need set up and we'll be right back. Um, I'm going to pause here a second and talk about shop safety. This uh, video is not meant to be a course on safety or how to use tools and you'll see me working in the shop using tools uh, within my knowledge and comfort level so I encourage everybody to do the adequate research in order to find what your comfort and skill level is working with tools and stay safe in your own shop. All right, we've got the overhead and the um, front on camera set up and some extra light and uh, I think we're ready to go. First thing I was going to show you is uh, this is just a uh, started out as a pencil sketch of an orca and uh, then I laid in a good solid uh, line with the black uh, marker pen and what I did was to, to get the outline embedded I had it on this uh, wood scrap here and the copper panel it was flat then with just a design drawn on it and I took these um, these tools here that I use for my liners and you can tell um, one of them is straight across, the others have some gentle curves in them. That's how I navigate the design. And um, we just work this along quite easily, uh, just like this. And it creates the design. And um, I'm striking these tools with my uh, Picard ball peen hammer there. And this has saved us a, a little bit of a step because usually that takes. I don't know, sometimes 20 or 30 minutes just depending on how well it's going. Maybe sometimes 10 if you're just in the zone. But um, anyhow, what that gives us is a design that uh, is now on the back that we can work with. And the first thing I try to do is get that design kind of puffed out a little bit. And I've got on the other side of this block a recessed area that we're going to use to uh, drive the um, the copper panel to, to force it to go the opposite direction. And um, this is just a little basic contingent of uh, wood billets that I actually just made. And I'll be using a wood mallet that I made in the shop. And uh, we'll just be moving this until we get the, um, the chasing, uh, the, the puffed out portion, whatever you want to call that, uh, till we get that accomplished. So the first thing I do is I pick one and I'm going to pick this tool right here and we're going to just go around the edges of the design and try to force that material um, outward a little bit. Now I wasn't trying to shortchange anybody here by doing the um, line work uh, in advance, but uh, you know, from the point of drawing a, a design to getting to the point where I think it's about finished, usually these could take an hour or more, and I figured that um, going on and doing the outline work, that is the perhaps the simplest and most basic part of the project. That would get us a little bit jump started here and maybe make the video a little more compact and interesting to watch. So I'm staying as much as I can to this side of our line rather than trying to push the line itself out. And along through here, uh, the, the wood uh, billet kind of slipped in and, and hit right on the line, but we're not anywhere near being problematical, um, you know, making a, a, a slight mishit like that. I just try to keep in mind that we're moving this metal around gradually uh, to get it to the point that we want it, and it really, uh, 
it's hard to ruin this once you've gotten your set started here, you've got your design. I have said in a previous video that um, even when you split one of these panels, and it's easier to split them when you're using a metal tool than when you're using these wooden billets, but um, it can be fixed uh, by doing a little creative soldering. So even if you think you've messed up a, um, a, a particular spot, a lot of times it's recoverable. But maybe at some point, if we have a design that's going well and that happens just naturally, uh, I'll get out the soldering stuff and we'll try to fix it. And we're working our way through that tail. That area uh, looks a little tight, but you can see uh, we could have selected a smaller uh, profile tool to get up in there, but I think this one actually worked fine. And I have more. I just I just pulled out the um, smallest and quickest set just to keep things simple. I have about three or four times as many of these made uh, and available to me in the drawer that have different sizes and shapes on them. Sometimes it speeds things up. It's kind of like working with a limited palette when you're when you're painting. Um, if you have fewer choices, it's sometimes easier to forge ahead. Now I think we can flip this over just to have a look at it. You can see we have started to raise um, right there next to the outline, kind of a ridge all the way around. And I'm going to give this a few more hits with a, a, a bigger sized um, billet here. Now the purpose of that is it kind of helps raise up our design a little faster. And we've fallen into this, um, it's not really a predicament, just something we need to deal with. The um, area that I have hollowed out here on this wood, the, um, the, the panel is now just about resting in there, so there's no place for the metal to move. So what we have to do is uh, take this guy back out. I'm going to flip it over to the flat side again. And we're going to actually re-straighten this panel a little bit, enough to keep working with. So, And it's just that easy to get um, the panel back, not quite flat again, but um, straighten it out enough where we can continue working with it. And uh, I'm going to flip this back over again. We were working with this uh, larger size. I'm going to keep that up in the center.
right, it's about time to flip it over and have another look at it. It's, this one is just really appears to be going quickly. What do you do with these things? I'm going to rest my hands here and just talk for a couple of minutes. What do you do with these things? Well, um, in previous video I have uh, walked around the property and taken some short clips of ones that I have installed outside as um, decor, and I kind of consider these an outdoor uh, decorative item, but you certainly could use them in your house. Uh, in fact, uh, once these things are flattened out again, a person could build a wood frame, put these in it. Um, you can also paint these with oil paints, and sometimes they turn out really well doing that. I tend to prefer just the look of the copper uh, that's been hammered, and uh, I like that to weather, and I, I prefer that look, but I do sometimes paint them. So uh, let's get this panel flattened out again, and we'll, um, we'll have another round at it. And some of these, they're just really surprised you how fast the um, part raises up. I'm going to try to hold that for the cameras to look at. Um, it, this one is, is falling into that category. I'm really astonished at how fast it's tried to come up on us. Uh, I'm going to go back around the edges and get some more definition going there. And um, let me just position this thing where I'm trying to get this positioned where this kind of little skinny area has some resistance from these two sides when I hit it along here. And once you get more practiced in doing these things, that's the type of moves that you just, you just naturally start doing that. You don't even think about it really. Um, it becomes intuitive what it is that you need to do while you're working. And um, I might do one of these things, eventually uh, do it as an ASMR where I don't speak. Once I've gotten a few of these out and people know the technique, uh, you could just follow along perhaps what I'm, what I'm doing without me even having to talk about it. I'm going to switch off tools temporarily to do that fin there. Just kind of moving along that line again and trying to raise it right there where the um, crease was. And it may sound like I'm really whacking this here, but I'm showing some, some restraint here because even though this one is blunted, you can drive it right through the copper if you just really hit too hard. And that's a real danger when you're working with the metal tools. Uh, they will definitely cut the copper if you're not careful what you're doing. All right, I'm not feeling much space underneath there again, so we're going to need to go back and kind of flatten this one out again. I 
And as the design raises up and it gets more kind of puffy, more chased out, um, you're going to have to do this a little more frequently. And I forgot to flip that over to give me a good flat surface to work with. But, um, well, I'm really, uh, this is, you know, it, this is a piece of metal, folks. And uh, sometimes these things will really fight you. And then sometimes they just fall into place. And uh, this one, it sure started to feel like one of those ones that kind of falls into place and um, you don't have to fight with it quite so much. It's kind of time to get up near this uh, part of the body there and try to give that a little more um, definition between the raised part and the recessed part. So I'm trying to Get in there kind of close to it. And I'm careful turning around even at this juncture and using these um, edges, but I think the design at this point can take it. We'll go right up there in the corner between the body and the fin and give it a good whack. Well, people will have sat down expecting a lengthy process, and this one has gone so well that it, um, it's not going to take us much longer. I'm going to go through some areas now where I want to kind of build a little bit of definition. Um, I'm going to raise this interior part here just a hair, same there, same here, just to give it a little more um, where it kind of pops out at us. This juncture here where the top uh, fin meets the body. I'm going to make sure that that uh, comes out a little bit more. And I tell you, we're just, we're, um, you know, not too far really from having this thing uh, finished out. I'm, really, they astonish me sometimes how well they go. I can come out typically and do one of these. And uh, sometimes they just really happen. that part a little. I'm going right next to the outline here. Take that biggest one again and just
Now I'm going to get that flattened out again and um, we're going to have kind of a critical look at it because I think we may be pretty close to where I'll want to do the hand work on it. We're just going up next to the body there and um, pushing it down a little bit. a bit of quiet there because I was contemplating whether to, um, I think this one here, I'm going to do a little bit with that eye there, but um, I think this one, we're just going to give that eye a real quick whack there. And uh, then pop the rest of it back out. So that gave our eye just a little bit of a recess there, which is what I was looking for. And you can see, um, I'm going to try to hold this up so the cameras can see how far out the design has been pushed. And what we would do from here, uh, well, first things first, I'm going to actually take uh, one of these tools back. I'm going to kind of burnish the edge of this. But um, the next step in the process is, um, Taking this inside, I would probably go to the uh, kitchen sink and you could take silver polish or even copper polish and rag. You could uh, clean this thing up, could get rid of some of these um, incidental scratches. You could certainly get rid of this uh, marker pen lines and then um, this thing could be ready for uh, you know, whatever installation you have in mind. Oftentimes I'll just drill some holes in the edge and uh, I'll mount them like right on the side of a garage, barn, whatever it is that you're wanting to uh, bring some outdoor charm to. Uh, of course, I mentioned earlier these things can be painted and uh, some of them that I've done with oils have turned out quite well. They look nice, but uh, I tend to stay with the uh, look of um, this when it's uh, been outside and weathering and it gets kind of that black and green coppery look about it and um, just a really nice uh, nice look when they're um, allowed to get that weathering outside for a, a year or two. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through and with this hand uh, by hand not with the mallet I'm just going to go through here and kind of smooth out some of these strikes and you can see I'm putting a little bit of pressure there, but we're not making further, you know, big choices with this at this point. I basically consider this piece to be mostly finished and we're not making the mistake of trying to overwork it at this point. There we go. So I'm smoothing this thing out. We're just going all the way around our design there. And hopefully, 
when I turn this guy over, maybe some magic will have been produced. Um, you know, there's a time to say I'm not going to overwork this piece, and I think we've hit that. Anyhow, there we are. I um, want to thank everybody for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon in another video here. So, uh, till then, take care.